What's up, my fellow Remnant 2 gamers? Welcome back to the channel. It's D Werewolf Gaming back with another Remnant 2 video. All right, I hope everybody has been doing well and staying safe. All right, guys. So you know we halfway through the month. We're getting close to September. Can't wait for the next DLC. With that being said, guys, I'm still you know trying to bring you content, trying to keep it fresh, guys. That's why a lot of times I try to go back and forth from my range builds. I try to use all different kind of weapons. Even weapons that I don't really enjoy using sometimes, I still try to keep things fresh by using those weapons as well. So, with that being said, guys, today I wanted to bring a build to you that has great survivability, 
and you can dish out a lot of damage. You know, well, guys, when I mean great survivability, this build, you know, I'm playing the medic and I'm playing the alchemist. And the alchemist, I am, I'm using the, the basic the skill that you can get your life back if you go down and die. And with the medic, you know, you get that shield and it also heals you whenever you throw you're using that shield. And also, guys, for those who don't know about the alchemist, whenever you use a relic as, as well, you get some type of passive buff as well. So you definitely want to be using these relics during your gameplay. All right, so with that being said, guys, I want to give a big thank you for everyone that continues to support me on the channel, especially those who always have something positive, positive to say. And, guys, if you like the content, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That's what helps push my content on YouTube and get it, get it to other people who may like this particular type of content as well. All right, guys, this, ch this channel is always about that positivity. Guys, and I want to, sh whatever I'm, I'm enjoying within this game, I always want to share it with the community. And I try my best to make builds that I believe that everyone can use. You know, sometimes I may make build, a build that may not everyone or you may not always have the weapons, but I always try to show some sort of options and rings and amulets or other things that you can change out during the gameplay. All right, so I'm going to fight one more boss to believe after that, and then we'll go with the build breakdown shortly. All right, guys, so we're going to kill the Dire Fiend really quick, uh, and then we'll go over the build breakdown. I hope this was enough gameplay just so you can see just how powerful this build is, guys. But like I said before, these builds are not always about being powerful or the amount of, most amount of damage. It's also about having great survivability. You know, at the end of the day, nobody wants to play on Apocalypse and keep, you know, getting hit over and over and dying very fast. So with that being said, you know, so if you're new to this game, this would be a great build for you because... It can, uh, it ultimately it can dish out a lot of damage and it gives you great survivability, primarily because of the two classes that I am using in this particular setup. With that being said, you know, I try to make these builds so that everyone can use them. I know sometimes I might make a build that not everyone can use, but ultimately the goal is to just try to make builds for the whole community. All right, so let's go over the build breakdown. I did use the Alchemist, which is the Prime, because Spirited is the Prime perk, which the Alchemist can have three additional concoction buffs active at any given time. So, you know, you'll have four in total. And I did use the Elixir of Life, guys, and it grants a 7.5 health regeneration per second and protects against fatal death and lasts for 26 seconds. All right, and the only way to get it, uh, it, it it's a 180-second cooldown on that. And it also affects your allies as well, so great for playing in groups as well. All right, your first trait is Experimentalist, and using the Relic applies a random buff on the Alchemist and all allies. All right, gold to lead, uh, picking up scraps of metal, have a 15% in uh, chance to drop ammo. Pankia, curative effects applied to allies within 15 meters grants 15% resistances and 10 uh, Pankia gain 10 status and blight resistance. All right, liquid courage grants 25% increase in all damage and 5% critical chance. All right, the medic I did use the healing shield and basically you get a shield for 100% of the max health for 13 seconds and you regenerate 30% of your max health over the duration and guys this shield will be applied to your allies as well so it's just great for playing in groups as well all right in invigorated grants 25 percent increase in all damage and five percent crit critical chance benevolence increases relic efficacy by 15 percent and heals allies by 30 for 30 percent of their total health increasing up to 60 percent depending on if their health is below 35 percent all right backbone increases the hit medic can take before losing great health by two and Benefactor increases Relic use speed by 20% and gain minus one stagger. Wear whichever armor you prefer. 
And for this build, I think the shield and heart play the vital part. But it grants the shield for 100% max health. Lasts for 20 seconds and less damage. I did go with mod duration, mod damage, and 10% elemental damage. But use the shards that work best for you. And to start the show, the spark fire shotgun. This fires incinerated shells applying burning, which deals 891 fire damage over 12 seconds. I did use the overflow. Guys, and this embeds it with shock and also applies overload. And I did pair this with twisting rounds to increase the range damage of this weapon to by 10% to bleeding targets. At level 10, range weak spots and range critical hits apply bleeding, dealing 3,690 bleed over 80 seconds. All right, the melee weapon, I did use the Crow Axe, guys, Blacey. It also applies shocks to the enemy as well when you charge it and throw. I did use the Tainted Blade uh, Mutator to increase melee damage by 8% per stack of Crow. It only targets up to five stacks to get a 40%. And at charge, uh, attacks apply corroded dealing 6,450 acid damage over 40 seconds and the nebula guy is just amazing but basically you have these nano swarm or nano machines that seek out the enemies within a uh, certain distance uh, dealing 33.3 acid damage per hit applying corroded dealing 2,970 acid damage over 40 seconds and I did use the feedback mutated to generate 20% of a single charge value as passive mod power over 10 seconds. And at level 10, generates 15% of base damage dealt as mod power as well. But you could use the Enigma or any other type of element that you prefer in this build. All right, this time keep it short to increase the duration of all status effects applied, but varies depending on the type of status effect. Burden of the Destroyer, you will, you will lose ideal range by 35%, but you get increase in all damage by 15%. All right, and the Shadow of Misery increases status effect damage by 20%. And the Catalog's Jewel just automatically generates 10 mile power per second. And guys, me, you know by now, I'm, I, I always use a different a variety of different rings. For example, if you look right here at my Nebula, the corrosive damage is 7,740. But, you know, if you want more damage, there are many other rings you could have used, such as the uh, that one, which, as you can see, it brought my corrosive damage to 8,100. Uh, and that ring was the Illumina ring. Uh, you could even went with the acid stone, which increases acid damage. And as you see, it brought up the corrosive damage to 8,280. All right, and even if you have the high crystal ring, it would have worked good as well because it deals 5% of this additional damage for each unique status effect. Guys, I'm using all the status effects, so this would have worked great as well. And the band of the fanatic, but the only problem with that is you will lose a little bit of damage when you use this ring. I mean, it basically gives you all your damage up front, but you lose some of that duration. I like duration, so I don't really use the Bandit Fanatic as much. As you see there, it reduced the corrosive damage almost by half when you put that ring on. So I don't. that's one reason I don't even use that ring too much. All right. And your amulet, I did use the Energize Net Coal Sum. and increased the status effect damage by 20%. And guys, creates a 2.6 meter explosion for 20% of full damage. It can only happen once every five seconds. All right, and there are many other amulets you could have chose. I'm just going to show you a few. I did use this, the Cost of Betrayal one time, which increases all damage by 25%, but you will have one relic. And if you use it, you will take 25% increased damage, but you will get the relic charged back shortly after. So, you know, this worked pretty good as well. Ultimately, you know, it's your choice in this in this, in in your build. And now I'm going to show you a couple more amulets that you could have used in this build as well. All right, guys, and the Fragment Thorn, uh, thorn uh Amulet was great because it increases status effect by 20% and inflicting four more status effects will apply exposed and enemies that are exposed will receive 15% additional damage from all sources. This was guys as you my setup here I did have all four of the elements so this amulet would have worked in this build as well. And definitely this one as well. Element Enhancer increases acid damage by 25%. And look at that corrosive damage now, 9,720. So ultimately, it's, it's your choice in your gameplay if you need more damage. And the Sinister Totem uh, is great as well because it increases status damage by 1% for 15 seconds. And you get up to 50 stacks in that. So basically, get up to 50% increase in status effect damage. And another good hand longer you could have used was, the, of course, the Monolith would have been great in this build because you got that Sandstorm that deals elemental damage, and whenever that target dies, it moves to the next uh, enemy, guys. And it does apply exposed as well. And anytime they are exposed, you get they take 15% increase in all damage. But guys, you know I try to keep these builds different. Show you that the other weapons work as well. The Spark Fire Shotgun is just great, so that's why I chose that. All right, your traits, as you can see, guys. And also, your, your tonics, use whichever tonics work best for you. I did have Chill Scream to increase movement speed by 10%. Uh, Mud Tooth to get my health up by 20 more points. Bart Skin to increase my armor by 30. 
And I did have Xenoplasma to reduce skill cooldown by 10%. All right, your traits potency increases consumer duration by 100%. That comes automatically on the Alchemist. All right, triage comes automatically on Medic, which increases healing by 50%. I did have 10 points in regrowth, so I can get some health regen by 1.5. Uh, affliction to keep those status effects that on them longer. I had 10 points in that. Did have 10 points in gifted, so the skills can last a little bit longer. Up to 10 points in that. I only had four points in fortified, increased armor effectiveness by 20%. Three points in swiftness, increased movement speed and traversal environment, traversal speed. Uh, two points in long shots since I'm using a shotgun. It will increase the ideal range a little bit. Ten points in spirit to get my mods back faster. Ten points in expertise so I get my spills back a little bit quicker. I did have ten points in Sakaar. That would allow, allow the duration of the mods to last longer. And I did have a right at, had a, right at eight points in vigor that to increase max health by 24. And I did have right at uh, six points in having to increase AOE and aura size. But guys, you could have put that in any other trait. I just threw that in there. Uh, but you could have put that in any other trait that would have helped you survive a little bit longer because I'm not really using anything that's really spreading uh, status effect that much. All right, Bart skin to reduce all damage. Had four points in that. Three points in footwork to improve movement speed while aiming. All right, guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your value time as always. Really appreciate each and every one of you. All right, D-Werewolf out.